everyone welcome back to my channel today I am going to talk about and show <laughs> colors that inspire me for fall more specifically my ideal fall palette um, I will be creating it with you guys and the reason we are looking at a summer 2022 palette is that was the last time I ever created a seasonal palette and I had vowed to do it every season so I epic failed so we're gonna do a redo however I am going to take some of my favorite colors we'll swatch them out I'll talk about why they inspire me for fall and then we'll play around with them a little bit and go from there will it have 20 colors I don't think so but <laughs> we'll find out and yes, a lot of them will be Roman Schmall, but I am a Roman Schmall girl. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do for this, I have created a little thing here. Love the title, right? So creative. Uh, I did do 20 squares, but I don't think I'll finish them all. However, we're gonna use the super duper awesome palette that I had done a video of and we cannot get. However, someone did leave in the comments that they see it pop up on Amazon at random. So somehow keep an eye on it. <laughs> but I am going to use this to create my fall palette because I, I have some tube colors I wanna add. I have my Roman Schmal pans that I'll obviously wanna add. Um, so I can mix them and match them in here. And then the nice thing is, is when winter comes around and I'm ready to change the palette out, I can just pop what's left over out, clean it out, um, and go from there. Now, eventually this will become my permanent studio palette where I will have colors that I use all the time. And then I maybe will start just swapping out my seasonal ones, like have a row for seasonal colors. But... In the meantime, I wanted to use this um, for this purpose because palettes are very versatile and can be cleaned out and changed out whenever you want. <laughs> so that's what we're going to use to create the palette. So let's talk about colors. I have a ridiculous amount of colors, which is why it'll take a while to go through all of these and I'm not going to subject you to that. However, I like to look at all my swatches and kind of get a feel. Now, I obviously know what's in my Roman Schmall palette, and I can already tell what colors would automatically be pulled out for fall because I'm already using them. <laughs> but um, I have other colors and, you know, open stock that I want to use up. So it's fun to kind of go through here, like check out this beautiful permanent magenta from my Sennelier's. That actually might be a really fun one to throw in there. Um, and then I just... We'll keep going through and looking at all my swatches. What jumps out at me, you know? Does this Schmincke Quinacridone Gold Hue beat the Quinacridone Gold of my Roman Schmall palette? Actually, it might, <laughs> to be quite honest. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here going through all of my swatches, finding colors that I want to add um, into my palette, whether it be a tube, a pan, granulating, super granulating, not granulating, I don't care, glitter paint, whatever. We're going to make one that inspires me for fall. I understand we are like a month into fall, but things got a little crazy for me. So hey, fall begins now. All right, so I'm going to pick colors and I will be back. Okay, I have filled this out. It took me about <laughs> two hours to go through every swatch chart. Pick all the colors I liked and try not to just use Roman Schmall. I was successful in that. Um, as you can see here, I have filled out the names. I ended up using all 20. You know what? Maybe I am just a person who can't have enough colors. I also embrace convenience mixes if you're new to my channel. So I have no qualms about mixing or, or not mixing colors. <laughs> so that's also why I don't mind a bigger palette. Anywho. I've written them all down. I've indicated whether they're a tube or a pan, just so I know where the heck they are in this awesome palette. So here we go. Doesn't it look so dinky when you say, like only you look at it this way? Um, now you could fit half pans in here. Maybe I'll add some like glittery little accents or something. I don't know. I have a palette somewhere with a really cool copper color that would be gorgeous, but 
I have put little dollops in here. This is a lot of paint, these dollops. Um, anytime you're creating a palette, you don't need a ton of paint. And especially if you're creating a seasonal palette, like you don't need a ton of paint because you're gonna be popping that out. So you don't want it to go to waste. Um, so we are gonna be swatching that. So yeah, I did a combination of my Roman Schmalls. And then I did grab tube paints, a variety of brands, although Magello and Daniel Smith seem to be more predominant. However, I did grab a Sennelier because I really couldn't decide between the Sennelier's <laughs> Van Gogh and Daniel Smith. So that's probably why I have 20 because these three are pretty close to one another, not the same pigments, but I couldn't help myself. So what I'll do now is <laughs> get this all out of the way and we will get swatching in our usual fashion okay first up is daniel smith's lemon yellow now i am swatching wet to dry because that is how i paint and you should always swatch the way you paint so that you can see how your color is actually going to look Next is Quinacridone Gold from Roman Schmall. And how could you not use that color in autumn, right? Then we have Permanent Yellow Deep from Magello Mission Gold, which is PY65. Then we have Autumn Orange, also from Mission Gold. PO36. I did not select it simply because it was called Autumn Orange. It's actually just very well named. Then we have a permanent Alizarin Crimson from Daniel Smith. It's like a cranberry right there. Quinacridone Magenta from Daniel Smith as well. PR202. Isn't that beautiful? Magenta Permanent from Sennelier. Just a little bit more on the purple side. Obviously, this is more red leaning, but just a beautiful color all around. Dusk Pink from Van Gogh. Now, it does have PV19 and PBK11. It is a granulating color, so wet on wet, it would look even better, but just that color alone is... Ugh. Beautiful. Schmincke Violet, PV23. Quinacridone Purple by Roman Schmall. Oh God, this one is not, I didn't have enough on there. It's a beautiful color. Phalo Blue Green Shade by Roman Schmall, which is PB15-3. I know it seems awfully bright for the fall, but I'll explain later. Prussian Blue by Roman Schmall, PB27. Mayan Dark Blue, which is Daniel Smith, PB82. Transparent Green Gold from Schmincke, PY154, PBR7. This one is Hooker's Green from Roman Schmall. It is PY150 and PB27. Olive Green Deep, also from Roman Schmall. Aquarius Green, also from Roman Schmall. You can see I favor the greens, at least those olivey greens from Roman Schmall. Burnt Sienna from Da Vinci, PBR7. And then Red Brown from Magello Mission Gold, PBR25. 
And then we have Payne's Gray from Roman Schmoll. I just like their Payne's Gray. <laughs> but who knows, after my next comparison video, I may not. Okay, so my paints are dry, so now you can kind of see them better. Also, like when I was swatching, I know some probably looked rather opaque or darker, and they were covering up the wording. This is actually a really good way to test the opacity of any color, by the way. Write something under it and paint over it or swatch over it. Also, go outside of the lines of your little swatch box, um, because otherwise you really don't know how opaque a color can be. So, I think I like this palette. Now, once these dried, they were awfully close. I mean, like I said, this one is a little bit more reddish leaning. Um, and I don't know if the camera is catching it. Even though I'm recording in 4K, that doesn't always mean that it shows. Um, but I do still think I'm going to keep both of them because this does have a little bit more of that. Well, it's PV19, which I love. Um, I love PR202 as well, though. You guys know I love quinacridone magenta. <laughs> but, yeah, so I think I'll keep them both, or I may swap them out. However, I am happy that I did put in this dusk pink. Now, it is a granulating color. It does have PB19, same as uh, the Sennelier over here, but PBK11, which is what makes it just, oh, that's like the perfect autumnal color. Also, it could be for Halloween, too, but whatever. <laughs> Halloween is in autumn. Um, so, when it comes to yellows, really, when I paint, I need just one yellow. <laughs> I'm not a big yellow user. So, I like the Lemon Yellow from Daniel Smith. It's a little bit less intense than, say, the Aquarius Yellow. See the diff right there? This one was just a little too much too high <laughs> so um i went with that one the quinacridone gold for roman schmall i'm glad i included that because it's like that perfect uh it's like that just luscious gold that leaves turn into right and then i have the autumn orange like i said i didn't pick it for the name it is just named very well <laughs> by magello uh for blues Oh, I guess we got some purples down here we could talk about too, but I kept my purples kind of simple. Um, simply because I don't, I kept them simple simply because, well, uh, I don't use purples as crazy. I tend to lean more towards like the red-violet range in the fall. However, I did want some purples. Um, I went with a Schmincke violet instead of, say, Windsor & Newton's Dioxazine violet or even um, Roman Schmall's violet simply because I wanted to give it a shot. <laughs> um, I did pick my two favorite blues though from Roman Schmoll. And then I had to add in this Mayan dark blue because oh, I could zoom you guys in, couldn't I? Because I love how deep and rich it is and it's just, oh, it's a beautiful color. Uh, when it came to like my greenish colors, as you can see, I sucked to very olivey type colors. Again, I don't shame convenience mixes. I embrace. Um, the transparent green gold was that perfect light tone I wanted. The hooker's green isn't really olive -y, but it does have the, a, a little touch of yellow. Olive green deep, and then just that richness of the Aquarius green, I think will round things out really well. Um, I picked these two browns. Now, they're both red leaning, but I didn't really find a cool brown that I wanted to use in the palette. So I just went with these two because I actually really enjoy both of them. Again, I like to just have the paint ready to go, not make the color myself. Um, I love this deep richness of the red brown from Magello, but I really like the Burnt Sienna from Da Vinci. So I have both of those. I may come back later because it's not like I don't have space and add a cooler brown, such as one I was thinking of. I mean, I like the Van Dyke brown from Sennelier, but I was leaning more towards like the sepia brown from Schmincke. There was another one somewhere in here. Um, oh, it might be in my other swatch book. I think it is. Yeah, it is. 
So I may come back and add another brown, but really these are more the browns I tend to use in the fall. I want the warm, rich ones rather than the cold, cool tones. And then I did add the Payne's Gray. I use my Payne's Gray sometimes when I wanna mix. I rarely mix, but when I do, I use my Payne's Gray. Um, so yeah, this is my preferred fall palette. Now, we are all different in what we paint, how we paint, how we even perceive color. Like how I perceive this color here may not be the way you perceive it. We all see things differently. But this is just my idea of a great palette and it inspires me to paint fall things. Typically florals, because that's what I like to paint, but you know what I mean. Um, so, like when it comes to creating your fall palette, you have to sit down and ask yourself a couple things. One, you can look and like look at videos and see what everyone else does for their fall palette, of course, because there's nothing wrong with getting a little inspiration. Um, but you want to sort of branch out, like pick colors that speak to you, right? I mean, what colors do you think would work for your type, your style of artwork? That's what I do. Like I'll look at other people's, get a little idea here and there. What color did I want to use for that? Um, but for the most part, I tend to do what I know and love and then just kind of like go from there. <laughs> but on occasion, I'll look up some ideas from other people. But yeah, these are all just me doing my thing and picking what I wanted to, you know, use for all of my painting and just, yeah, rolling with it. I mean, think about what you want to do the colors that inspire you, like what do you paint also, because that does play a role in picking your palette colors. If you're more into botanicals, obviously there's going to be some greens, and then of course oranges and yellows, because you need those for your leaves and the browns, but then you'll still want colors for your petals. Um, so like, really... The best advice I can give anyone when creating their own seasonal palette is just do what makes you happy and don't care what everyone else says. Because I'm sure, like, for example, if, you know, I'll get a few people here and there that'll say, oh, you know, your palette's missing this color or um, it's, it's missing this proper mixing color so it's not a proper palette. I'm not making a proper palette. I'm making my, my palette. So always keep that in mind. I believe rules are meant to be broken in any type of art, and especially watercolor art. There should be no rules other than, okay, maybe don't mix your <laughs> green and purple unless you like that kind of color. I, You know, things like that. But I think you should branch out, pick the colors that speak to you, go through your whole collection though. That's what makes it fun. I have a variety of brands here. I've got Daniel Smith, Roman Schmall, Mission, you know, Gold. Yes, I love Roman Schmall and that's what I traditionally paint with, but I didn't go strictly with Roman Schmall because I wanted to branch out a bit and see what I could find that would work from other brands, like these be beautiful colors. So Go through all your paints, use what you can, make a fun seasonal palette. That's my challenge to you. And then I'd love to hear, ooh, that was totally my watch dropping. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you what colors you ended up putting in your fall palette. Um, I'm sure by now you probably already have a fall palette made. I'm just behind the times at the moment, but that's because a lot of things get in the way. But I'd still love to know what you guys put in your fall palette. If you've got some similar colors to mine or whatnot, just, you know, leave a comment below. And yeah, until next time, take care. Bye now.